What's up everyone, it's Mix from version 1 and today I'm gonna be unboxing the Aurora 2 power supply. It's basically the clone of the critical Atom X or Atom X2, I don't know what's it called now, but it's a clone of that one. It's a cheap alternative. You can buy it on Lazada. I don't know if you can buy it in Amazon, but here in the Philippines you can buy it on Lazada and it's I got mine for about 1600 so that's really cheap. So anyway, it's shipped from China, so I'm going to be a little careful with unboxing it. I might try turning it on, we'll see. But yeah, I'm going to be wearing a face mask and I'll be wiping the box thoroughly. You can never be too safe, you know. Alright, let's get it started. Put that thing on backwards. <laughs> All right, so here's the box. I don't think they put it in any protective box or anything. It doesn't feel like the cardboard box is inside. So let me see where the scissors on it. Right there. Um, yeah, let's open it. Okay, so the box is a little beat, I guess, and it's like really, there's practically no protective padding. I can feel it's like a really thin box. So there's a box. Let's see how to open this thing. Ah, from here. Uh, it's not even sealed, so there's no seal to close the to seal the box. Anyway, let's check it out. Okay, so it comes with a manual. All right, it's a plastic housing, so didn't expect anything fancy from a one thousand six hundred peso product. But anyway, let's pull out the power supply. Actually, the power supply itself feels nice and heavy. It actually feels durable. It really looks similar to the critical one. So, let's try it out. It comes with its own power brick. Oh, and it comes with the plug cord thing. Not all products come with this thing, so I'm happy that it does. So let's put this stuff aside. And we can try out the machine. Let's put this somewhere there. But first, let's clean it up. <laughs> Never go wrong with Green Cross, 70% solution. Disinfect this thing. Should have probably done this to the box itself, but whatever. Um, I'm just gonna throw it out and then clean whatever surface that the box touched. I mean, I doubt that there's anything wrong with it. I'm sure this stuff goes through customs, but it can never be too safe. Alright. Now I'm hoping this thing is 220 volt. Yeah, it is 240, 100 to 240 volts, so it runs with both 110, 220. Yep, we'll be fine. Right, so as you can see it's powered now. Uh, one thing I did notice that I kind of don't like, but it's a perf personal preference of mine, 
Um, I don't like that the power brick and the the wire connecting the power brick and the actual power supply is very short. Now you can probably use a different power brick but just to be safe, we'll just use the one that it comes with. And yeah, it's a little short for me. So you kind of can't put it on high places or, you know, like on a high table or whatnot. Like the power brick is going to be hanging. Anyway, I think it works similar to the other, the more expensive version, which is the critical. It changes color depending on what volts it's at. So right now it's at 7.3 and it's flashing purple. Alright, let's try lowering the voltage. Oh, by the way, it's not a push button. It's just a touch button. You don't need to like press down on it. Which is actually pretty cool. <laughs> For 1,600, this is a steal. All right, let's put it at five. Uh, let's put it at five volts, which is green. Now, here's the thing I don't understand. I don't know if you need to put a foot switch or not. If you need, if you still need to plug in a foot switch, so I'm gonna give that a try right now. Grab this cord. Plug it in here. Uh, I'm gonna use a noisy machine just so that you guys can hear if it's running or not. Okay, so this should have the function where you just press something on the power supply and it acts as a foot switch. And it works. There's a slight delay, but I'm guessing that happens even with the other one. Pretty awesome. Alright, so we tried it with the coil machine. Now we're going to try it with the rotary machine. Working fine. The power supply feels like it's giving a steady power to the machine. If you will, because sometimes the power supply is faulty and it makes the machine jump. I would say, it, I don't know, I call it jumping. Like, it's like strong and then weak, strong, weak. It's constant, which is good. Which is how good power supply should be. Now, interesting thing with this machine is you can change how it's set up. Basically, you can make it a one tattoo machine setup or a two tattoo machine setup. So to do that, you need to hold the up voltage and the left arrow key. Hold it down for three seconds. So we'll do that right now. One, two, three, four, well, four seconds until you see the one dash zero. Now one dash zero means one machine setup. So basically what it does is it it makes sure that you can't press the right so that you don't accidentally power a machine that's on the table or or like switch yeah basically that so that you don't power a machine that you don't want to that you don't want power while you're in your two that the machine setup now if you want to set it back to a two machine setup just press the down voltage and the right arrow key together for about three to four seconds. Let's try that. One, two, three, four. And it said one dash one. Now that means one, one, two. Basically two supply setup. Now we'll try to run it with the two setup so that we can see what it's like. So I'll put this thing down on the table first. And I'm gonna be right back. I'll grab an RCA cable and then we'll try a two machine setup. All right, so since we tried it with clip cords, we might as well try it with the RCA. So here's the RCA. I hope it works. Let's see. 
It's working fine. Now, uh, I'm gonna leave this on the table and I'll attach the other rotary machine to the clip cord and we'll try the two machines set up and see if it's gonna work or not. So right now it's set to the RCA. We'll press the button. It's running on RCA right now. It's pretty quiet, it's a quiet machine. It's actually really good for black and gray. I got it from uh, Tush one. <laughs> All right. Next, we'll move it to the other machine that's attached to the clip cord. Awesome. Now, you don't have to fumble around with your machines. Like if you're using a liner shader setup, you don't need to like remove the clip cord, attach it to the other machine. That actually causes wear and tear to your clip cords and to your RCAs, which causes damage in the long run. This clip cord that I'm using right now is actually pretty uh, old and it's already time to change it. It's a little wonky where it's connected to the power supply, like I have to fiddle around with it. So I'll probably make a review on a new clip cord that I'm gonna buy. All right, so pretty awesome. You don't need a foot pedal anymore. You don't need to swap between two machines and one cord. You can just do a dual setup. Of course, there are tattoo projects that require more than two machines. Like I personally use about four or yeah, I use about four on the big pieces that I do and three on the mediums like a magnum, a round shader, and the liner. But yeah, you don't need to swap around too much now because you have a two machine setup. Now the thing, the, the, let's talk about its build quality. Like I said earlier, it's a really sturdy machine. Um, and it has a really good rubber mat thing going on so that it doesn't fall off the table easily. It's pretty stuck there. And it has magnets. Now one thing though, now that it's been running for what? It's only been plugged in and maybe running for about 30 minutes because I took several takes in this video. Um, and it's a little hot. Now I don't get this heat from my HP2. Like I've never, well, for one thing, I've never like touched the HP2 while it's been running for a while, but I've never really had an issue with heat. But this power supply, it's pretty hot right now. It's not, oops, it's not too hot, but it's pretty warm. So that's something you should consider. Now I'm going to try it out tomorrow, see how it performs. And hopefully it does a good job. So we'll see. I don't know how long it's going to last. It's only 1,600 pesos. So there's no harm in trying it. Um, I'll get back to you guys and to see if it's like worth buying. Uh, this heat problem right now, it isn't a good sign for me. But we'll find out. Alright, so if you guys like this video, don't forget to leave a like, comment below, subscribe, hit that bell, and I'll see you guys next time. Man, I hope this thing does well. Yeah. By the way guys, the magnet on this thing is really good. Like it's attached now to my um to my stand and I can't even move it. Like it won't it's not budging. Well yeah the thing is stuck on there. So far it's pretty cool. Now there might be a little hassle if you're not used to Pressing the foot, uh, the foot pedal button, I guess. 
Uh, but you could attach a regular foot switch. You could still put the old setup if you're not comfortable. You just have to remove the old... Um, you just have to remove the other clip cord. So you're going to run it on a one machine setup and then put a foot switch on the other one. It's okay. I mean, you could do that. It's fine. But you already have all the features. You might as well just take the extra time to press the button to turn it off. Alright guys, so that's it for my unboxing of the Aurora 2. I think it's pretty cool. I'm gonna do a review on it maybe tomorrow or a few days after tomorrow so that I can instantly give you feedback on how the power supply performed during the three tattoo sessions tomorrow. 